Gary Sass, head of the Hassenfeld Institute and sponsor of this new poll. Thanks for taking the time to talk with me. Well, thanks for having us, Ted. Appreciate it. So, um, you know, you know me, I love polls, so I'm fascinated by all the findings, but it's your poll, so I want to start with this, Gary. When you got these results back from Joe Fleming, who of course is your pollster at Hassenfeld and our pollster at Channel 12, uh, works for a lot of organizations, what stood out to you initially as you went through the results? Well, three things stood out. The first thing that stood out is uh, the governor's proceeding to open the economy is widely supported. Two-thirds of the people uh, think the governor's moving at the, at the right pace. The second thing that stood up was about opening the economy. And I thought the results were fairly mixed uh, in terms of uh, being comfortable uh, with going to retail shopping, going to barbershops. Uh, there was a returning to work, uh, two thirds of the people were comfortable. Still one third wasn't, that's not insignificant. But on other issues, the state was very divided across all kinds of uh, income groups and all kinds of sociological factors. Only 47% felt comfortable dining out. Most females didn't feel comfortable dining out. On attending to religious services was split. Statistically, there was no difference between those that felt comfortable and those that felt uncomfortable. Uh, 48 were comfortable, 44% were uncomfortable. But the one that strikes me that I think is going to have the greatest impact on opening the economy and going forward is the attitudes towards people sending their kids back to K through 12 schools. State was split right down the middle. It was 46 were in favor, but 40% were opposed. And as you get into some of the cross tabs information, you find out that more people under 40, which are probably people, parents, uh, were opposed to or concerned and not comfortable, I shouldn't say opposed, but uncomfortable uh, with sending their kids back to school. So that surprised me a lot because you don't open the economy until you open the schools back up. That's, the, that's pretty obvious. The third thing that struck me uh, was there's a leadership crisis in the state. 69% of the people that responded across all demographics, this, this wasn't confined to a, a specific demographic, seven out of 10 said they lack confidence in the ability of state elected officials to solve problems. I was surprised by that. Particularly, uh, it's counterintuitive to the huge support the governor has been receiving uh, as she manages the pandemic, which uh, is recognized nationally as probably one of the best efforts uh, in the country. Uh, so that was the thing. And the, and the fourth thing is, I'll stop here, was when we asked the question, uh, do you think an issue is a big or a, a moderate problem? It was all bread and butter issues. Seven out of 10 uh, said healthcare, 80% healthcare was a problem. 80% said budget deficits were a problem. 76% said unemployment was a problem. Uh, over 70% said that growing income inequality in the state was a problem. And 70% said race relations were a problem. So was, with the exception of race relations, those are all bread and butter issues. When you drill down further and, and you ask questions about uh, uh, policing and uh, how police misconduct situations are being handled, a majority thought it was a problem, it was about 55, 57%, but nowhere near the level of the seven out of 10 who saw the bread and butter issues as, as the biggest problems facing the state. Uh, distance learning is a, is a concern too. Majority were very concerned about distance learning. And as you break down the numbers on, on distance uh, learning, uh, you find that it was parents in terms of age group, and it was low income people, which raises interesting questions about how equitable our education system can be if kids don't get back into, into school. And we spoke before about the anxiety on that issue. So those are about the three or four things that primarily jumped out, Ted. It, it's interesting to me when I look through the poll, Gary, uh, you know, Governor Raimondo historically had never had super high poll ratings. They were pretty middling throughout her term, even though she won re-election. But all the polling we've seen, including yours, has been pretty supportive of her approach on coronavirus. But at the same time, for, gov for the governor, if I'm looking at this, it seems like it's a le there's a leadership challenge here because you have really wide discrepancies in what the people want. You know, some people still quite nervous even to go to a restaurant. You know, there is one in four rounders, though, saying here that she's going too slow. 
I suppose to some extent you, you have to be careful not to just reopen based on polling. You need to look at the public health data. But you know, you served at the highest levels with Governor Kateri. You know, if you're looking at this poll and then you're advising a governor, what do you tell them? I would tell her two things. I, I would say number one, stay the course because you have the public behind you on managing the biggest crisis this country's had in 100 years. And this goes back to polling we did several months ago on what the public attitudes were towards her. And 66% is a high number. Only 25% think she's going too slow. And most of those Republicans, they're Republican outliers. I think it reflects the kind of Trumpism of the, of, of the party. So I say, say the course on that. Uh, people want leadership. I would say on the second question, where people see big or moderate problems, you can't solve everything at one time. So you need to drill down as what things can be handled. And the two that jump up at me are the budget deficit, which is obvious. And, and the second uh, is, is the unemployment uh, issue in, in healthcare. So I would focus on, on those issues, recognize I can't do everything, and in the next two years, uh, try to make progress. These, I think the people understand this, these are unprecedented times. And I was not surprised uh, where seven out of 10 people were concerned about the ability of elected officials to solve problems. I don't think you'd find, I don't know this, but I don't think you'd find that very different elsewhere. And it's driven by you know, what's happening in the, in the White House. You know, people, I think, are beginning to understand what's, what's going on, <clears throat> on there. It's driven you know, by the pandemic. Uh, it's driven by high unemployment. So of course you would get that, that high number. So all you can do is stay the course, manage the pandemic, pick out the biggest issues, try to address them, and, and, and move forward. One of the um, cross tabs that stuck out to me last night as I was preparing for our interview, Gary, uh, older voters, seniors, 60 plus voters are uh, even more supportive of the current pace of reopening the governor's doing than some of the younger voters you polled, which in my mind rec re reminded me of the polling we're seeing nationally where older voters are surprisingly more open to the Democratic ticket this year, which some analysts have suggested is because with coronavirus being harder health-wise on older folks, you know, it's making them nervous about quick reopenings. Do you think that's a similar phenomenon in Rhode Island? Oh, absolutely. Well, in Rhode Island, it's, it's hard to say because the state is such a dominant one-party state. And, and so you have to be careful how you interpret, you know, these trends. Uh, but I think it's a, a definite phenomenon. I think the real phenomenon is, is Republicans are isolated. Uh, when you look at the 25% uh, who think the governor's not moving fast enough, and then you look at 46% of Republicans think the state is not being open you know, fast enough, that's the dynamic I saw in, 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 the, in, the, in the crosstabs uh, because of the one-party nature of the state. You also asked something that was interesting to me about regionalizing schools. We've talked about this many times over the years, you for a lot longer than me. I know uh, it's, it's a perennial debate. What did you think about the uh, kind of the public attitudes toward that idea uh, when you put the question to the voters in the poll? Well, I think that you have to look at it at two levels. The level that we looked at it, which was statewide, the, the macro level, 50% uh, favored regionalization, 36 did not. And what that tells you is if you have a third or more than a third of the people opposed to a radical change in how a public service is delivered, uh, the chances are not very good that you can get there. That's a strong base to, to oppose this from. Uh, the other side of the question, which you don't poll, and it's back to this old saying, all oh, politics is local. If you went into some suburban communities and said, what do you think of regionalization? Uh, you probably wouldn't be there after dark, you'd, 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 you'd be gone. Uh, I remember back uh, years ago when we talked about trying to regionalize Central Falls and Pawtucket, uh, and all kinds of demographic and racial issues got involved in that conversation. So it's one thing to look at as a state level. When you do national polling on a candidate, it doesn't tell you what's happening in the battleground states. And so that question doesn't tell you what's happening in communities or the concerns in communities. But it does show that of over a third of the people who are opposed to it, and it would be a tough political road to go to make progress. The thing that conflicts with that, which is find very interesting, uh, is that uh, I think it was almost 70 percent, 65 or 70 percent, were thought property taxes were a big problem or a moderate problem in the state. 
And so there's a little bit of a disconnect because I thought the uh, regionalization question was a good stalking horse for if you think property taxes are high, what do you want to do about them? And it, 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 the, the dichotomy still exists there. Mm. What, um, when you look at, you know, the still significant number of voters who are, you know, unsure about going back to normal life in full, you know, you did see variation between going to work, for example, versus going to a church service or something like that. But, you know, what, what I took away from that, and I'm curious what you think, is what some of the public health experts have said, which is, you probably can't fix the economic problem until you fix the health problem, because even if you let things open, people are still quite, ner quite a few people are still quite nervous. Oh, I think you're absolutely right. I agree. And I think they're also nervous because of a lack of a national policy. So no one told the uh, coronavirus that we had 50 states. And so you're seeing it now, with, you know, with the disease you know, peaking in states where it hadn't peaked uh, prior. So there's a lot of anxiety. There's a lot of anxiety. And I think the issue with the coronavirus is what you say, you have to fix the health problem first. But the other driver, which is, I think, uh, behind some of these numbers, is people are feeling a tremendous amount of uncertainty because of a lack of leadership. And you get back to why the governor is doing so well, she is actually leading on the pandemic. You don't have to agree with every decision she makes, uh, but people feel comfortable that as an adult, an adult in charge, there's leadership, there's, there's direction. Uh, throughout the most of the uh, society and the economy, there's more uncertainty than, than direction. And I think that's behind it. And I think these people who think you can just go ahead and open up, uh, you know, without dealing with the health issue, hit your point head on. Uh, until there's a vaccine or some kind of, uh, you know, treatment, there's going to be tremendous anxiety. And we talked about the question of, uh, of just something simple like retail. Two thirds of the people in the state uh, feel comfortable going back to retail establishments and buying clothes or washing machines or whatever they're going to buy in a retail establishment but that doesn't well that belies the fact that a third don't feel comfortable and unless the, a, a retailer or a commercial person uh, is getting 100 percent of people back into their business uh, there are economic pressures uh, i was surprised a little bit uh, where a majority of people don't feel comfortable going back into a restaurant. Shouldn't have been, maybe. But even if it was 50-50, that doesn't portend for successful opening, reopening of an economy. So Gary, uh, last question. Uh, so as I said, I love polls. I, they help me as a reporter, and I just find them interesting as a political junkie. Hassenfeld Institute this is the second one you've done during the pandemic, and you guys have been working with Joe Plumbing now for a number of years on polling. Uh, do you think you'll continue to do polling on uh, Rhode Island issues in, in the coming months and years? Oh, yeah, at least for the next year we will, as long as the pandemic's around, because we feel that part of our responsibility in working with public officials to give them the tools and skills to, they need to be effective leaders is to get a pretty good handle on how the public feels about issues, particularly during periods of great uncertainty. So the Hassan Fellows is going to be aggressively uh, polling for the next year. Hopefully the pandemic will be behind us by then and we can go back to more normal uh, operations. But polling is going to be a major thing that we do for a while.